Implicit bias is not reduced by just having good intentions. It's not reduced by me telling you, you know, check your bias at the door. Most Americans believe themselves to be incredibly fair people. In fact, upwards of 90% of Americans believe in the equality of races and genders. And yet, when we look at the data, we can see that sometimes our value structure does not actually align with the outcomes. The stories that we've been told repeatedly tend to reinforce some of the very challenging stereotypes that we've been trying to overcome. I'm Alexis McGill Johnson. I'm co-founder and executive director of the Perception Institute. Perception Institute is a consortium of researchers, mostly social psychologists and other strategists who come together to translate some of the way our brain works, literally how our brains and bodies react to identity differences. Everything that we are exposed to impacts our brain. Everything we read, the associations that we see in our newspaper, in our magazines, in the literature that we read, all impacts how we interpret the world. Let's experience our unconscious networks. How many triangles do you see in this picture? How many people got five? How many people got nine? The answer is zero. No actual lines, right? No three sides, no three angles. So what happened? Our brains filled in information when there was none there. Our brains make meaning by filling in gaps sorting information into categories and creating associations around them. So when I say the word teacher, you know, oftentimes a picture of a woman will pop into our brains. When I say pilot, we don't often think about a woman, much less a woman of color. Stereotypes are traits or attitudes that we have about a particular group of people. They're essentially schemas that we've created to understand different people in our lives. Those schemas, those stereotypes, when they get embedded in negative ways into our brain, that's what we call implicit bias. So at Perception, we never talk about implicit bias without also talking about this concept of racial anxiety. Racial anxiety in a cross-racial interaction can show up differently. So for people of color, we may be concerned in that interaction about hostility, discrimination, and validation. For whites, the fear of racial anxiety has a lot to do with worrying that something that they may say may land or be perceived as racist. Colorblindness is a vision of fairness that suggests that the best way to reduce racial discrimination is to treat everyone equally regardless of their race or ethnicity. So when we talk about colorblindness, this idea that we are not supposed to notice race is something that we see a lot in storylines, particularly in children's storylines where we've added a layer of multiculturalism so everyone is represented and yet the default still is white. So colorblindness is one of those ways that I think we perpetuate stereotypes with a strong aspiration of trying to be fair. I think what's hard about the question of what stories we should be telling is that, you know, I, I crave representation. I, I grew up in an era where there was not a tremendous amount of representation. And when I saw a representation of people who looked like me, who were um, middle class families, African American families growing up in America, what I saw was such an extreme representation, this perfect, exceptional family that felt like where I wanted to go, but also didn't reflect the mass group of families that I grew up with and lived with. I have completely celebrate Obama and Oprah and Beyonce, but I kind of want a hashtag black mediocrity. You know, what is it about us that is just so average that we all have the capacity and the systems and structures that allow us to achieve excellence at some point? And if we don't embrace the normalization that we are all, that we all start off kind of in a middling level, we never get the opportunities to, to be able to excel unless we've already excelled. Our brains have literally evolved through storytelling. We know what to expect when we see a story. There's going to be a hero, there's gonna be a villain, there's gonna be a battle to be won, a conflict to be won, and there's going to be some kind of resolution. 
all of those elements become critically important for our brain to track what's happening and to absorb information. We rely tremendously on culture and on media and the stories that we absorb to change the way our brains see each other. I'm talking to storytellers and I am looking at the impact of how bias and racial anxiety and stereotyping, rampant stereotyping gets embedded into real harms for real people every single day. I have a question for you. I have a challenge for you. What are you doing to de-link stereotypes in your films and the stories that you're telling? As a storyteller, you have a choice. Are you promoting an aspiration like colorblindness and meritocracy, or are you trying to actually find ways to de-link those stereotypes and allow your characters to show up as fully formed individuals who are very conscious and unapologetic about their social identity, but also are counter-stereotyping the ways in which we normally see them?